This video is sponsored by Lexar. So I've had a bunch of interesting projects recently, some things that are coming up, and then one of the other things is trying out the Hasselblad X2D. I'll be doing uh, full videos on this and some different things. And one of the things that as I've been doing more just nature stuff and getting out, both for a new project and for this thing, I wanted to get some new filters and try some new things out. So one of the things uh, as a YouTuber I did, I had a project that was coming up and just needed a filter last minute. And so I messaged the Nisi account and asked like, hey, uh, would you guys be willing to throw a filter my way? I can just borrow it for a few days for uh, this project I'm working on. And in that they said, yeah, yeah, sure. Like we can totally help you out with that. And also, are you interested in a new system that relies on magnets and is a kind of like quick acting system? Now, while this video isn't financially compensated by Nisi, they obviously did provide me with these filters and I did agree to make a video about them and with them uh, because I was going out to do multiple things and figured it was going to be an easy way to both get some images with the new Hasselblad and with the FX3. So I'm definitely marking this down as a paid promotional thing, even though uh, no money has changed hands or anything like that. All right, up here at Snoqualmie Pass, it is pouring down rain. That's what happens when you have one day to go out and make some videos. But this is my first little jaunt into using the Hasselblad X2D. Uh, obviously I have a lot of experience using the 907X that shares the same sensor, but there are more differences actually than I anticipated when using this camera versus the 907X. And to be honest, they've all been good and it's all been a fun experience, uh, but it is definitely a little bit of a bummer to be absolutely getting <laughs> just soaked out here uh, because it would have been nice to explore the autumn weather without getting rained on so much. But that is a Pacific Northwest for you. take a quick second and thank today's sponsor, which is Pexar. Yes, Pexar like Lexar. Pexar is actually a new brand by Lexar. So you know that they bring their 28 years of industry experience into this product. One of the things that many of us have an issue with is the fact that we take all these amazing photos and they just end up on hard drives. But by having a digital picture frame like this one by Pexar, it's just super easy to use your phone, jump on the app and just send photos to the frame. This has a 2000 by 1200 2K resolution, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, as well as the ability to take up to a terabyte of expandable storage if you'd like. Now, unlike a lot of other digital picture frames, this actually comes with a touchscreen and an interface that is really easy to get through. And if you don't wanna use the app, it has an SD card slot or a USB port. As far as mounting options, you can either wall mount it or there is a nice little magnetic stand that makes propping this up just about anywhere you want pretty easy. 
So whether you wanna get this for your own house and throw your own work or memories on there, or you wanna buy it for a loved one as the holidays are coming up, it's honestly be really fun for us to see our photos popping up on this. My kids love looking at it and they love commenting on the different photos that pop up as well. So thanks again to Pexar for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself or a loved one, the link is obviously down in the description below. One of the things that is really annoying to me about filters is just the fact that like, screwing them on and off takes forever. And then I've used other magnetic filters in the past, but they, they're like, they, they magnet on, but then you still have to twist them to some extent. And what is amazing about these, and just to like spoil the rest of this review, is that you can put these on at any point and like, they'll just go on and like, they're not gonna fall off. I don't personally feel the need to lock them on, but if you do want to, you can, push them over to this little line right here, and then they are fully on there. Like I'm holding a uh, like $12,000 camera by this filter, and I feel totally fine with it because I know that it's locked on there. Now, if I did that when it's not locked on, I can definitely pull this off, but there is enough resistance on here and like kind of the perfect amount of resistance to make this a little bit difficult to get off, which is what you want in something like this. Now, again, if I wanted to like fully lock it on, you can see that there's a little marking here that you can put it on. But for my work and for how I'm doing things, it's just so much nicer to just pop this on and off. And the magnets are totally strong enough that I would have zero issues with this. Now there's different configurations that you can go for here. I have the 82 mag system. Uh, that's just 82 millimeter filter threads. And that makes it so I can use them on anything all the way obviously up to 82 millimeters. So they come with step up rings for 68, 72, 77, and then 82 obviously. And I opted for the cinema set mostly because it's going to give me enough stuff for landscape photography and whatnot as well as all the things that I would be needing for doing video work. So it comes with a black mist 1 8th, which is fantastic. It's just enough bloom kind of in the highlights like this to give you a little bit of a nice look in things and soften things up a little bit. And then it comes with four different ND filters, making that whole process really easy. You can definitely stack them if you need to. And it also comes with a circular polarizing filter, which is obviously super helpful in both video stuff and landscapes. And even super wide, like I have the 16 to 35 F4 PZ lens that I use on my Sony FX3 all the time. I didn't see any vignetting or any issues, but the main thing that I was looking for in these wasn't necessarily the convenience, although that is something that I have been looking for, and it's something that, as someone that does hybrid photo video work together, makes this so much easier. I was able to just like pop these into some easy spaces, take photos, take photos, take photos, grab one of these out of my pocket, toss it on, take some video clips, and then I can immediately take it back off, start shooting photos again. Um, and that has been like the dream setup so far. The other thing about that as well is that I'm not needing to have a lot of color shift in my images. So you can see there's like a tiny, really bad test chart behind me. So what I did was I took the 90 mil on the X2D and wanted to have a lot of space, just took this thing, slapped it on vertically, and then went through every filter just to see the color shift. And while there technically is, like there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of color uh, just shift there. When you look at like some of the other filters that I have, uh, you see a much more significant shift than you do here. So it's one of those things where it's like, in practice, you don't, I don't notice it at all. Um, when I do have other filters that are still decent filters, but they do shift the image quite a bit. Now, part of that is going to be the fact that uh, I've been using variable ND filters versus a solid ND. And while I don't have a variable ND filter yet, it's definitely on the roadmap and it's gonna be something that I'm gonna be 100% picking up for this system. Uh, when they do end up launching a VND. So big thanks to Nisi for sending these over. If you want to check them out as well, obviously I'll put a link in the description down below. And if you're interested in seeing some future Hasselblad X2D content, subscribe because I definitely am going to have some stuff coming on this channel. And if you wanna see one of my videos on the FX3, you can check that out up here. Check out my video on the 907X up here and I'll see you in one of those videos.